money in the bank don't disappear <laughs> all right do you give this bad boy a win loss or tie what what, what, do, you, uh, what do you give this bad boy as always feel free in the comments sid go first I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it a really weak win. Okay. Um, For me, the 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 main event, Bloodline Civil War match is really the only big moment to be on the show. The rest of the show was just it was okay. Uh, I did like the way that both Money in the Bank matches played out, but those are always decent matches. Yeah. Money in the Bank, especially the ladder matches, are probably one of my favorite gimmicks. I put Money in the Bank up there with the Royal Rumble as pretty solid pay-per-views usually. I mean, you really have to go out of your way to screw up a Money in the Bank. Um, I'm giving it a win. Um, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. But the atmosphere made it amazing. And uh, I'll probably say this a few times during the podcast, but I want to bring this point home. Um, it doesn't matter if you're WWE, AEW, Impact, New Japan, or New Japan Strong. When people go overseas or do a co-promotion in a new country or whatever, it seems like the athletes care more. And because the fans don't get to see it all the time, I think it's a, a huge win. So there you go. Giving it a win. <laughs> I can't stop looking at that. I'm going to go over quick reviews. Feel free to cut me off anytime you want. Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. You are the, I think you are literally the only person that called this. Uh, Damian really? Priest wins. I thought it was super obvious. See, I think so many people were in love with L.A. Knight. So many people were in love with L.A. Knight. Obviously, my dumb ass like, Nakamura and Ricochet has a chance. New Japan. <laughs> uh, but Yeah, um, never. Because like, I, I feel like I, I, as a dumbass, picked Ricochet and Nakamura, but you know they weren't going to happen. L.A. Knight seems to be the most popular pick, and I thought maybe they would throw in Logan Paul just to be, you know, shithead celebrity, look at him. I am pretty sure, and you know me, I hang out on the internets a lot. You were the only person that picked Damien Priest that I know of. Of course, now that we say that, 800 people will be like, I said Damien Priest, I said Damien I said Priest. It. I believed it all along. <laughs> No, he's been on a superstar rise, and ever since those pictures circled of the before and after of him, like a few years ago when he was overweight, uh, he had badly applied makeup, his ring gear didn't look that great working on the indies, right side by side with him at WWE, I think it was at the lead into Backlash somewhere around that time. When that when that got circulated, and then the next pay per view was going to be Puerto Rico, there was no doubt in my mind at that point. WWE is going to push this dude to the fucking moon. Yeah, because um, WWE, especially uh, Vince and Triple H, and most of them are really into, you know, working out. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, shit, I had a word for it. Bro. Fitness. Fitness is the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really into fitness. And people that are really into fitness love people that turn their lives around. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. he was a fat podcaster. And now look at him. <laughs> um, so, and yeah. WWE in general, they, they always love having that good story that they can go back to and tap in. Because think about it. Like, say in like a year from now, we get uh, Damien beating whomever to get the title finally a huge moment huge moment they are going to immediately put out the documentary where it's going back about how he was overweight all this struggling on the indies blah 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 you know they'll do it that's why it, they eat it up it, it's a it's anyone a, they can do big stories on it's a good story because like everyone mm -hmm. has been not almost everyone i mean there's some athletes who are great genes but most people have hit being out of shape the average person knows what it's like to be out of shape. So it's just such an easy story to connect to. It's such an easy story to connect to. Um, then you have the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Uh, Liv and Rodriguez win. They defeat Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Shayna Baszler turns on Ra uh, Ronda Rousey. We'll be talking about that in the future. New champions, nine minutes. As a guy that only watches highlights in the pay-per-view... And didn't pay attention to the internet stories. I was like, what the hell? It did kind of make... It did make him kind of look stupid. It kind of made him look stupid. It's like, 
this is when I'm gonna snap. Um, but yeah, it was a real weird timing for her to have snapped. Like, why snap in the middle of the match? Toss away your own championship opportunity. Like, you're throwing away because kayfabe outside of kayfabe, no matter how you look at it, getting another championship belt onto your list of accolades. There's no character that's not for or in, in favor of that. It doesn't make sense to turn on them and cost their chance to win the belts in the middle of the match. Yeah, and I, and, I, and kayfabe-wise, it's pretty dumb, too, because, A, it makes the next champs look weak. But also, like, if me and you, let's say me and you were going to win the Super Bowl, and I was like, oh, God damn it, I'm pissed off at him. I'm sorry, I'm not going to throw three interceptions and lose a Super Bowl to fucking be like, yeah, take that, raccoon. I don't know, right. it just it, seems silly. It, it makes no sense to me from a character perspective at all. Yeah. Uh, international Championship, Gunther defeats Matt Riddle, but also have a huge return. Um, overall, I, I I was shocked. Uh, I, I have a, some younger viewers in the Twitch thing, and they're not feeling Gunther. I'm feeling Gunther, and... Mr. European's back. So what did you Dude, think of this match? My buddy Heinous, who I, I finally got him more into, like, he'll at least watch modern wrestling now, and he's keeping up with it, uh, with WWEs. And I can kind of get him to watch AEW, but he doesn't like it. it. But he's interesting as a barometer for those, like, for me at least, for those old fans that have come back a little bit. Because he 100% his Attitude Era was all he liked in wrestling. Oh, there's so the many fans time. that were like that, though. Yeah, but it's, he's a great barometer for me personally to be able to gauge and see how he reacts to different things. Dude, yeah. he is into it. Like, super into it. And I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm with you. I mean, no, no, I'm not with you. I don't get why anyone's that into Gunther. I like the strong style matches, but and I like the the ring general personality because of his announcer sidekick. But that's it. And like, meanwhile, him, he's fucking head over heels in love with Gunther. Wants him to beat Roman. Loves Gunther. And I'm sitting here like, he's okay. His matches are entertaining. They aren't bad, but he's just another angry foreign character again. Yeah, it's like Rusev again. Um, I, I could be wrong on this. This is kind of like I'm just throwing it out there. You know, sometimes you throw out ideas, even though you're not 100 percent sure if it's right or not. Um, mm -hmm. I this is my 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 theory. Okay, my hypothesis, okay. if you will. If you will, I think the 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 fans that watch the international, the indies, and more than WWE love Walter so much. That when he came to WWE, lost the weight, and became a strong style wrestler, we still remember the greatness that's Walter. And I feel like that audience spread out to the casual audience. And now everyone likes him, even though he's uh, a bit different. That's my kind of theory on it. I could be wrong. I actually like him, but also it's kind of like you see AJ Styles start from the indies. You see, well, you know, you kind of have a connection. But I, I like it a lot, and I like strong style. So that might be two factors going into it. Don't get me wrong. His triple threat at WrestleMania was one of the greatest matches WWE's ever had, uh, in my opinion. It was a phenomenal strong style match. Um, well, one of the greatest strong style matches they've ever had with him, Drew, and uh, Sheamus. So I'm... Uh, the match against Drew should be gold when that happens. Yeah, it sh it should be good. Drew does make a comeback. Uh, according to Triple H, don't believe the internet. And you know what? It's kind of hard because I, I you know I, I know like a lot of people shit on internet reporters and all that. But a anyone that's worked the mainstream media, they get it wrong all the time. <laughs> they just have a shinier presentation. And b you're covering something where people lie for a living. Like, so it's mm -hmm. like kind of difficult. So, but yeah, Triple H had a couple cheap shots. Um, next, you got Cody Rhodes defeats Dominic Mysterio. Crossroads, 840. Fans going crazy singing it. I believe it was Cody's birthday that day. Happy birthday, Cody. Uh, Happy birthday, Cody. 
Dominic Mysterio uh, being a great heel, Cody Rhodes being a great face. This works. Short match gets the job done, and I'm happy. Your thoughts on the match? I'm not. Okay. Listen, hear me out. I'm hearing the you. better story would have been if he goes out to have that match and gets jumped and gets the absolute shit kicked out of him before the bell rings to start the match. I mean, completely obliterated. And it doesn't matter if you have just uh, Brock Lesnar do it or if you have Judgment Day do it. Either way, it's great. I know Brock wouldn't have went to London, but either way, just a pack destroying him works too. And then having Dom just get the pin on him after he's already out. That's a, come on. Dom being a shit heel about beating Cody like that for the next two months would have been gold. Yeah, so that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, um, and, and I kind of agree with you. And the only thing I want to take a step farther is that Brock was there the next day. Brock, oh, wait, shit, you're right. Brock was there the next day on Monday Night Raw. So it's like, yeah. he, and not a lot, but I'm sure there would have been a big payday if he went over to overseas. So it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting situation. There You're you go. right, because I, I stand firm on what I said on a profit segment. I think that if you had had Brock show up and just obliterate Cody and decimate him like Suplex City debut style, um, and then just Dom lays on him, that's I think that's just pure fucking gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so to me, that's... It's amazing, but yeah, I see your point. Next, you got Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Sky defeats uh, Vega, Lynch, uh, Zoe, Bailey, and Trish Stratus. 17 minutes and 50 seconds. I enjoyed this, and you know, sometimes living in Japan 20, 30 years, you kind of start rooting for Jap Japanese talent just because you get to see them, you know, grow up and move up through the system. Kind of like when mm -hmm. I was in Florida, I rooted for Florida guys. And I would never, I never thought Sky was winning this, so it's a nice touch. I don't remember who I predicted, honestly, for this match. I don't think I do either. <laughs> but yeah, but I think, it, I think, I thought maybe Becky match. Lynch. See, I, I think, uh, all right, so this is my opinion. Whenever you have like a tag team or a faction inside a multi person match, I think if they lose that match as a tag team or a faction when they have that advantage, it's just really bad. Like, it makes them look like they're idiots. So I'm glad that a faction won it. Like, I'm I'm biased in that way. Got it. Uh, next, you get the World Heavyweight Championship. You know, I, went, I got a lot of spoilers because I was streaming, and I was so lucky I didn't get the spoilers <laughs> for this, but I kind of wish I did. I did not watch this live. Uh... And it's obvious, but it still hurts. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Seth Rollins champion defeats Finn Balor. Short match, 12 minutes, 30 seconds. And I, I don't know. Finn Balor is kind of like, you know, Dolph Ziggler 2.0. This time he just has a fucking a group of friends. But yeah, yeah uh, this, one, this one hurt. And I'm not very anti-Seth Rollins, but... I just don't want to see Finn Balor go down. But also, the Damian Priest and Finn Balor storyline is a little bit interesting. It looks like Finn Balor could have won. Damian Priest was thinking about cashing in. There's some tension there. Um, yeah. But it would also, you know, maybe if Finn Balor won, you could still have tension. But maybe I'm just asking, as, as Golden Star Alex likes to say, you're asking for too much. You're asking for too much. So uh, here's my thing. I'll first say, I I love Finn Bauer as a wrestler. I think Fergal Devitt was amazing. I thought he was, he is arguably the best or second best leader of Bullet Club. He, I believe he was the first leader. Um, he has some of the best entrances of all time, both in WWE and in New Japan. Like, I love the zombie entrance. And he was in Apollo 55, so I'm biased. To Gucci. But... If he got kicked out of the Judgment Day, I don't feel like Judgment Day really loses anything right now. No, no. I actually think probably Finn Balor has a better shot of being kicked out right now. Because at least yeah. he'll have a storyline where he's the enemy. I mean, but... I just... Go ahead. Him getting kicked out and going face could actually be really cool. 
Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Uh, not that, but I just want to add something here. It's the video package for this match was off the chart. They did a yep, lot yeah. of effort there. And it was the the store like the I'm a big catch of lines and you know dialogue or whatever. I, I just think sometimes there's like a line or two that just motivates you. But he's like, one of us got better and the other one got bitter. And then it shows um, you know, then it shows Finn and he goes, All I got left I'm paraphrasing, all I got left is bitterness. I thought that was so good writing. You ever wrote that? Give yourself a Barry Horowitz. That intro was off the charts. So there you go. That was a great package. I wish every wrestling promotion would put high quality packages like that before all their matches at pay-per-views because it instantly makes it easier to get casual friends involved. Oh, a hundred percent. And not that because I consider myself a casual, like there's so many times I'll go watch and that be like, hell yeah, I'm pumped up. You're caught up. And WWE really does care about casual fans, so it is the best way to get them caught up in caring about your storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, Bloodline Civil War Tag Team Match. The Usos defeat Roman Reigns and Solo via Uso Splash by Jay on Roman Reigns. 32 minutes long. Uh, the Usos do get the pin. Um, I I thought this was an NWO Bobby DeBrain Heaton thing. Where they gave out too much information prior. They're like, Roman Reigns hasn't been pinned in three years. I was like, they just kept saying that too Why'd much. Why'd you bring that fact up so much, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They brought that fact up a lot. So it's it's going to be interesting. I think this is one of the better sports entertainment storylines in a while. Um, and I've been enjoying it. And it's been a fun ride. Uh, overall, I think... I thought it was good. I just thought the match was a bit tad long, but not too much. You know, just, okay, I get it. But, yeah, overall, yeah. Um, Roman Reigns getting pinned would have been great. I just wish they didn't say the stat like, it felt like they said it a bunch. And maybe it's because you watch the same video packages over and over and over. But I mm. thought they were going, he hasn't been pinned in three years. Way too much. It, it would have been great. And and we're nitpicking a great moment here, but it would have been great if they didn't mention that one, two, three, and then you said it You're like, he hasn't been penned in three years. You know, that would have been a a lot better and exciting, but like we're saying, we're nitpicking overall, uh, give it a win. I know a lot of people don't like WWE because, you know, they're so loyal to brands or hating brands, but I really think under the triple H error, the pay-per-views are enjoyable to watch. The Raws and the SmackDowns go up and down, but I feel like the pay-per-views are pretty good. And unless you watch, the more you enjoy it. I know they always wanted casual fans. Here we are. You were about to say something? Honestly, I'd say since Triple H has taken over, it has been... AEW has more good wrestling on a day-by-day basis at their regular shows, but WWE has far more interesting regular shows as far as storylines go and storytelling. So keep it up, Triple H, and distract Vince. (laughs) <laughs> just just distract him as much as possible 